Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to show you how to create this popular pixelated ASCII effect. Now, the nice thing about this implementation is that you'll be able to control the entire grid just from a single parameter. Let's get started. OK, so here we are in Resolve. Let's first of all make a new Fusion composition. I'm going to make it 10 seconds long and I'm going to choose 25 for my frame rate and let's call it ASCII and create and then double click to open it up, come to the media pool and I'm going to drag in my asset, which looks like this. And this is from pexels.com and I will give you a link in the description. Now this asset is 4K, but I actually want to reformat it. So I'm going to create a new background. And actually what, what I want is not 1920 1080, which was my project settings. And in order to change the resolution, I've got to uncheck this box here. So I'm going to set it to a thousand by a thousand. And then what I can do is take my media in and pipe it in over the top. So we just need to scale this down. And I think a scale of something like 0.46 is going to do us. I also just want to crop off the front of this. So I'm going to come to trim in and set that to 150. And so now we're going to get that piece of action there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a crop. And again, I want to set this to 1000 by a thousand because what I want to do is ignore these pixels that extend beyond the end of the background. So then what I want to do is I want to scale this way down using a transform. So add a transform node and I'm just going to call this scalar because we're going to be referencing this uh, in several different places. And what I want to do is I want to set the filter method to nearest neighbor and I want to turn on flatten transform. I'm going to set my size to something like 0 0.06, but this size is actually going to be the scalar for the overall effect. So we can affect it all from this one value here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a merge. I'm going to add my background and we just need to swap the inputs around. So that's command or control T. And what we're going to do is again, switch switch the filter method to nearest neighbor. And in the size, we're going to add an expression. And for that, we're going to type one divided by scalar size. And you can see that because we've been using nearest neighbor for both of these, and because we flattened the transform in the scalar node, we're getting this nice pixelated effect. If I toggle the flat and transform, you can see the difference that it makes. And using nearest neighbor avoids any of the smoothing of the neighboring pixels. That is the default for all the other scaling modes. So there you go, perfect pixelated result. So now let's look at our text layer. So I'm just going to add a text and I'm going to type zero in this field here. I'm actually going to merge that over the background. So I'm going to grab the background to create a new merge. We need to again swap the input so the text is on top. Come back to the text. Let's set the size to 0.9. And for the vertical anchor, I want to set the value to negative 0.09. Just sort of centers it up in the middle of the box. So then what we want to do is right click in the text field and choose text scramble and then come over to the modifiers tab. And I'm going to have randomness of one. And then if you look at it, it's cycling through these substitute characters. In this case, I only want the integers between zero and nine. So I'm going to remove all those others. And now we're just getting the numbers of naught to nine. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale this down exactly as we did with our scalar. So we're going to tr add a transform node and what I want to do is I want to set the pivot to be zero on X and Y. And for the size, I'm going to add an expression. And that expression is going to be 0 0.001 divided by scalar dot size. So now if we look at that, what do we get? We get a little dot down there in the bottom left hand corner, which is exactly where we want it. And it's exactly the size we want it to match the grid of pixels that we've created from our image. So coming back to this transform, I'm going to add a duplicate node. So first of all, I want to add an expression to the copies field. And what this is going to be is 20 divided by scalar dot size. And then I want to come to the center and add an expression. So we've got point open brackets 0 0.5 
comma uh, 0 0.5 close brackets so after this first 0 0.5 I want to type plus and again we're going to use 0 0.001 divided by scalar dot size and so that's now going to set the offset correctly so if we look at that you'll see we've got a row along the bottom of our frame there and that will update with the text scrambler number so then all we need to do is copy this duplicate node command c command v and we need to cut this here so plus 0 0.001 divided by scalar size so i'm going to cut that and i'm going to paste it in after that second 0 0.5 like so so that's going to set the y offset and now if we look at it you'll see we've got a full frame of cycling numbers so what we're then going to do is merge that over the background again so add a merge bring in the background and then just swap the inputs so command or control t i'm going to quickly do some tidying up here so it's all a little bit more obvious one second i'll be back so that bit of tidy up was to put an underlay under that group of nodes that represents the text and another one under the routine that created this pixelated version of our action. So what I would then want to do is I want to add a merge. I'm going to take the background and use it as the background and I'm going to take my text and use it as the foreground. So then I want to take the output of my video mat and use it as the effect mask input for this merge. Let's take a look at it. So let's come over to settings and we want to set the channel to luminance. And now you can see we've actually got these numbers matted by the luminance of the video mat. And so this is going to be our base layer. I'm just going to drop in a brightness contrast after that because we might want to use that later on. So then I'm going to drop in a time speed and I want to take the output of my text into it and I'm going to set the delay to negative one. Then I'm going to add a new merge after that brightness contrast there and I'm going to take my time speed and add it as the foreground input and again we want to take the output of the video mat as the effect mask input. So then we also want to come over to the settings for this again switch to luminance but here what we're going to do is we're going to clip these low and high values so i'm going to go for 0.5 for the low and 0.51 for the high and now if we take a look at it we have our effect let's just try and make a bit more space for you to see it so in our background we've got one set of numbers cycling and in our foreground we've got another and it really is as simple as that we could actually with an extra time speed and with an extra merge using different values for these clips here we could add a, an extra layer but i'm going to stick with this to keep things simple so really as i say if we come back to our scalar here that one there and we adjust this value actually i'm going to zoom right into the picture so you can see we don't need to see the whole thing but what we can do is we can adjust this scalar value. So I'm going to go for 0 0.07 and you can see we get a smaller grid. So 0 0.08, smaller still. We could even go to 0.1 or we could go the other way, sort of 0 0.02. And you see we've got a really coarse grid. So everything is procedurally driven by this one scalar node. So just going back to that brightness contrast here, what we could do is, for example, increase the gamma, reduce the lift, whatever. We can, we can play with the look of the base layer to get the balance of the overall effect that we want. We could add at the end a color gain just to adjust the color. So we could add a little bit of blue in there, for example. We could add glow and all sorts of things. Just want to make the point that, of course, we could come back to our text and the modifiers and we could enter whatever characters we want in here so for example here I've added in some more exotic ASCII characters you can go to town with those values depending on what you want it to look like and if you wanted to add a lot more variation you could come to this first duplicate and you could adjust the time offset so I'm going to enter a time offset of one and you can see that each column now has a different set of numbers and obviously that results in the columns appearing to move across the screen and you may or may not like that effect. So anyway, that's the effect. I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.